Hello there. Welcome back to Attack of the Show. We are live and ready to play the role of enabler. Right now, let's go over to Kristen with lots more. It's Tuesday, and we're ready to feed the monkey on our back. Let's look at the latest DVD releases hitting stores. It's DVD Tuesday. <laughs> Our resident film expert, Chris Gore. Welcome back, Chris. I'm back. You're back. Yeah. And better than ever, I might say. <laughs> and with you, this is great. We get to I do know. this. I know. This is like my second ever DVD Day with you. This is so much fun. We should throw a party. Yeah. All right. Cool. So tell us about DOA Dead or Alive. Is that the first one up? Yes, it is. First one up, DOA. Look, look this is based, of course, on the video game characters. If you've ever played DOA, mm -hmm. love that game. Um, this is this is actually, you know, you, the video game movies do not have a good history, right? Most of them are crap. But I'm telling you, you're going to see a woman grab a gun and put on a bra simultaneously. <laughs> you're going to see your favorite characters. The, doing crazy, nutty action sequences. I mean, uh, and Jamie Presley actually has a, a great part in this film. Uh, it's, 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 they really took all the characters you know from the video game and did these perfect incarnations of them, you know, with the Zack, with the weird, you know, uh, mohawk and goatee and whatnot. And so seeing those characters come alive from the video game um, really works. And the action sequences on this thing are amazing. I mean, you could completely dismiss this. Eric Roberts is the main villain in it, and there's a great scene at the end where you see him just kicking butt with uh, like four ladies. And I'm telling, if, you, if you've ever played this game, and also I should mention, there is volleyball in it. You know, oh, like hey. there's, remember in DOA, there's a DOA game that's just volleyball. Right. Okay, they actually play volleyball in the movie and they come up with some lame premise for them to fight. It is just wall to wall action. I was ready to dismiss this movie from the start, but I'll tell you, I had so much fun watching it. Um, the one thing I will say, a slight disappointment is there's not a lot of extras. There's one behind the scenes about how they did some of the action sequences but I got to tell you, um, this may not be the best video game movie we've ever seen, but it certainly is up there with Mortal Kombat, if not better, just because it has a sense of fun. I'm, I'm surprised I'm saying this, but I'm telling you that DA, DOA is a blast. All right, so what's the bottom line, Chris? Bottom line is you should rent this. And, and by rent, I'm saying definitely see it. Not worth the purchase, but do not miss DOA. It's, it's that good, I'm telling you. All right, sweet. Well, you had me at volleyball, so don't worry okay, about good. it. All right, let's move on to Blood Rain 2 Deliverance. What about this? Of course, this is the second in the uh, Blood Rain. Uh, it's supposed to be a trilogy directed by Uwe Boll. And, you know, it's sort of like the first one, completely dismissible. This is a, this is a, <laughs> video, ga this is a video game movie that does, doesn't succeed because the action sequences are pretty lukewarm. Um, and I really expected a lot more out of it. The, the one actual cool thing is the DVD does come with a, a CD-ROM with, uh, the, you know, the game on it. But oh, that's I cool. But there's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's I mean, you know, it could have been so much better. Um, the action is pretty weak. Um, and Uwe... Um, you know, there's, there's extras on it where you get to say U Uwe Boll, you know, doing some, uh, you know, behind the scenes and whatnot. So there's a lot of deleted scenes. There's Uwe talking about the production. Um, there's commentary. Oh, nice. And I just like saying Uwe, by the way. I like saying and Uwe. So what's the bottom line on this? Bottom line on this is just, it's just an awful movie. It's All a right. pass. It's All a pass. Right. But there's a great trailer for Postal, which I think is going to be Uwe Boll's comeback. Postal looks amazing. If you look that up on the internet, check out the trailer. We'll have to see. All right, next film. Um, I haven't heard anything about this one, actually. Ten Till Noon. What about it? Tell me about the extras and all this that is, stuff. This is great. Ten Till Noon is a film directed by Scott Storm and written by Paul Osborne. And it is this indie movie that really should have gotten more play. It played the festival circuit. This is a movie that should have played Sundance. It's a great film that every span of the movie takes place in ten minutes. So it starts at 11.50, 10 till noon. And you see this character. He wakes up from his sleep. And he's being confronted by a hitman played actually by Morgan Freeman's son. And he gets shot in the head. Okay. <laughs> then we cut to t 10 minutes previous, and we see a woman having sex in a hotel room. Then we cut to 10 minutes previous to that, and we see two guys that are actually next to the hotel room listening to her have sex, and we learn that that's actually the wife of the guy you saw killed in the first scene. All right, well, don't tell so us the every, whole movie, okay? This Come doesn't, on now. This doesn't give everything away, but it's so cleverly written. It's so amazing it's in, in the way that there's every layer sort of reveals another layer about these characters, and you're riveted by the end. It just has a twist ending that you do not see coming, it's, and, and the, of course, the extras on it are amazing. You know, two commentary tracks, behind the scenes, deleted scenes, all the great stuff I love in a DV. What do you think I'm going to say? 
<laughs> let me guess, let me guess, buy. Yeah, th this is definitely a buy, um, and, and this is one of those movies you have to seek out, 10 till noon, I, I, I discovered it, it on the festival circuit, and you've got to see it. Which festival did you see it at? Uh, I saw it at, uh, it was at the San Diego Film Festival. Oh, wow. Which I'll be going to in uh, late September. Wonderful. You should come, it's a great festival. I would I love, love to, especially to go with lab. an expert. Yeah, well, yeah, I know where the parties are. That's my expertise. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm down, if anything, just to go to the parties. So Excellent. thank you so much. And do you have a, a quick pick for us? Actually, no, not today. All right, boo on the quick pick. But because okay. but, uh, we're out of time. Okay, all right, sweet. Well, thanks, Chris. Visit uh, filmthreat.com for more movie info. But right now, let's go over to Olivia, who's got even more stuff for you to buy. Thanks, Kristen. Today, we're running down the hottest video games hitting stores right now. Break out the credit card. It's time to attack this. EA's foray into the world of skateboarding simply titled Skate. This game is more of a simulator than Tony Hawk, so don't expect to do a 180 down some stairs, land on a rail, and then finish it off with a natta spin. Instead, expect it to do tricks that are actually real, but just as fun. The game also has a new control scheme using only the analog sticks and flick it technology. The harder you flick the stick, the higher you will ollie. Now, there's a video editor allowing you to replay and modify your best moments and a huge world that would take 10 minutes to skate across. In other words, Mr. Hawk might have some competition. Next up, we have the hotly anticipated title, Heavenly Sword. Developed by the team over at Ninja Theory, the game operates like a God of War styled hack and slash, but with a hot chick as the lead. In the game, you play as Noriko and you carry the Heavenly Sword. It's capable of dividing into two lighter blades or one heavy, powerful two-handed weapon. Use light, fast attacks to fight off a crowd or for the big guys, wind up and unleash a powerful strike. The graphics are simply stunning and even features the motion capture work of Gollum himself, Andy Serkis. Next, we have the latest installment in EA's legendary hockey franchise, NHL 08. The game features an innovative skill stick system, much like the highlight stick in Madden, which you use to juke around your opponents. The game also features a new goalie mode where you can control your goalie from a third person view, a play editor with practice mode, and for the first time ever, all the teams from the American Hockey League are included. You can also call for the puck by slapping your stick on the ice, just don't fan on the one-timer. And lastly, we have Drawn to Life for the Nintendo DS. In this platformer, your drawings come to life, dictating how you play. Using the stylus, you draw almost everything in your environment, including buildings and plants, even stars and planets. You also draw your vehicles to help you traverse through the land quicker. But without a doubt, the coolest part is that you draw and create your own hero. You can even trade your homemade characters using the DS's Wi-Fi capabilities. You guys, head on over to g4tv.com slash AOTS for info on all these new games and lots more. Don't go anywhere. We have plenty more coming up on TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. Honestly, I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. Wade. Welcome back to TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. We are live and ready to rock with Attack of the Show's own Zach Selwyn. Can't wait. The multi-talented Mr. Selwyn moonlights with the band Zachariah and the Lobos Riders. I just saw them a couple weeks ago. I really nice. like them. And their new album is set to drop pretty soon. The boys are here today to play a soon-to-be hit single. Take it away, Zach. There's a country song called I Want to Be a Lawnmower because they're always on grass. Yeah. 
something that's built to last. I want to be long over, cause they're always on grass. Get some. MySpace.com slash Zachariah and the Lobos Writers. Now, now tell me, did he not look so happy doing that? Uh, he did. It's definitely it's definitely Zach's thing to be in, in front of the mic like that. Now, we up. like that kind of music because our families are both from the South. Oklahoma, I know, Texas, we're, we're right there. Girls. But yeah. you know the only good thing coming out of Oklahoma? Me? 35 South. I'm just kidding, that's a joke. It was a highway. Anyways. Oh. Your Texas people <laughs> appreciate that. Texas is laughing right now, Kristen. <laughs> coming up on the next attack of the show in Gadget Prawn, 